Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Golden Sun Dark Dawn. In the last episode, we went to meet with the King of Kowocho and we found out that, well, he's not a very nice man. And he mistakenly gave us orders, gave us written orders, to investigate a youth A. And we, we took advantage of that, even though he, we agreed that we wouldn't help him. And we found out that we need to actually come here to Passage to hopefully find a way to just figure out how to get to the Kieran Mountains like we normally had planned. Uh, the last couple episodes were just pretty much just all side filler. You didn't have to do them, but I kind of figured I might as well go show off those special cutscenes that you might not get to see. But in today's episode, we arrived here at Passage Mountain Climb, and there is a... This is the way how you're supposed to get to Passage the first time. Passage is blocked off by this mountainous region, if you couldn't tell by that already. Uh, first things first, we you saw me push that log there. Uh, we want to cast Move, because you guys probably saw right above me. There is like a crumbly slide that you use to get down to lower levels. And if you move it out of the way, you'll be able to get that treasure chest we saw. If you come down here, we'll be able to get this treasure chest now. Inside the treasure chest is a special equip item called boots. I mean, like, they're shoes, just like, you know, everything you and me would normally wear. Uh, these are normally, like, there's not many, uh, boots in the game. There's, like, special boots, like, just leather boots. There's another one called safety boots, which we'll get later on. But there's not many boots. So, there are special items that, that take up their own inventory slot in your gear that you can equip. So, whenever you get boots, go ahead and equ uh, equip them because, well, they increase your defense a little bit. Alright, let's cast growth on this to get back. <laughs> let's get back up where we were. <laughs> now, what does this guy have to say? He says, the ladder has been cut. It has happened when Passage was attacked by the Kuojo soldiers. Aww, well, life isn't too easy, you know. Uh, we're going to have to cast Whirlwind on this flower right here to get past that. <laughs> that cut bridge there. Sacred Feather's worn up. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot I activated Sacred Feather in the last episode. Alright, so now we can actually come up here. Now, Mountain... Uh, Passage of Mountain Climb has interesting little puzzle right here. You guys probably saw me push that. This is a Zol Cube. A Zol Cube is used for various puzzles in this game. There's gonna be a lot of puzzles that revolve around this little material right here. You can actually push them, and when you push them, they go in a set direction. And they keep going until they hit, they had a dead stop with something. And also, they're affected by the wind a lot. You probably read the sign here, it says, Wind advisory, dangerous path ahead, very high chance of horrible gust. Passes some safety board. Now, <laughs> yeah, they're right, it's very windy here. So we're gonna have to block this wind passage by, you know, Cast and move on this and blocking it. Don't get caught up in windstorms, because otherwise it'll do this. <laughs> it'll just like knock you into the next area, next thing that that hits the wall there. So you'll be like, "Wee!" and then you do that. <laughs> now I'm gonna have to get up here. Uh, you know, say I'm not fast enough. Stop it. Okay. Okay. And then we gotta push this Zol Cube. Zol Cube, Cube are gonna be very apparent thing that we're going to be seeing throughout this game. So, be mindful of that. And you guys probably see that Juni right there. We're going to get him here in a second. Let's talk to this guy here. He says, Welcome to the Zol Mine. We gather all floating Zol stones that we, that we can find. Alright, let's see what Zol is. Zol, this unique min mineral also called, called floating stone. Floats on the air when touched by the wind. Okay, so that's pretty much what that is. Then send them higher on the updrafts here. Zol floats on the wind, you know. So that pretty much tells you a hint about Zol stones. You, we can manipulate Zol stones by casting Whirlwind on them. Because Whirlwind, as the name implies, is wind, essentially. <laughs> so let's go and uh, use that to make a bridge right there. Then we can go up this way. And go down here. And keep going around here. Now one thing I will, I will say that I've not gotten used to it. I still do it to this day. You guys probably noticed that, you know, I automatic I run. I've been running. Um, <laughs> I've been making Matthew run. 
thing is about Golden Sun, Golden Sun Lost Stage, you had to hold the B button in order to make Felix or Isaac run. But in this game, he runs automatically. Matthew runs automatically. And I am not used to this still. I still hold the B button when I'm walking everywhere to run. So, it's kind of funny. I, I, I'm still holding the B button to this day. Alright, so what we need to do is we need to actually push this soul cue here. I'm going to try to avoid the wind here. I'm going to jump down here. We're going to try to get that treasure chest over there. So we have to slide down here in order to push this soul cube. Go behind it and push it again. And then that will cause the wind to bring that soul cube up. So we can actually come over here and grab this treasure chest. In this treasure chest is actually kind of a useful item right now. We got the Blow Mace. The Blow Mace is a very powerful item. Alright, let's go ahead and uh, equip that. I have it, yeah, it's good for me right now. And I'm gonna give the Elven Rapier... Um... Let's give it to Tyrell. I, I, could, I know I could give it to Karis, but Karis is fine right now. I'm gonna have to probably sell, end up selling that uh, Themis Axe now. <laughs> Alright, so, as you can see, there is a Jenny right there. You have to time when the wind activates here. So, go now. There we go. And then you can go across there. Now, if you talk to the Jenny, he will attack you. So, <laughs> be on the mindful, he might run away from you. So, I'm going to actually go ahead and I'm going to cast Ragnarok, because I haven't had a chance to do that yet. Uh, let's go and I'm going to use a Ghost here. Siren Energy, Heat Wave! Heat Wave is another move I haven't shown off yet. And I'm going to use Chill. Alright. Ragnarok! This is a staple from the series. All Earth Adepts learn Ragnarok, and it's the most awesome move in the whole entire game. Well, one of the most awesome moves. <laughs> I can think of another one. But Ragnarok is a giant sword that plummets into the ground and just causes a lot of damage to enemies. They're really strong. It's a really strong physical Sinery attack. Heat wave! Boom! There we go. But there we go, he's take, taking down this Venus Jenny. Karis is down level 14. She learned Healthy Wind, which is a stronger version of the Fresh Breeze uh, um, healing move. Abuel? And there we go. We got our, another Venus Jenny. <laughs> Bark has joined us and he's been set to reef. Okay. This tough spirit is first met in the passage mountain climb. Bark's tough hide can protect allies like a shield. He's kind of like built up like a shield too. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Um, as of right now, since we don't have another one, Bark is going to have to stay on reef. So in order to keep all the synergy moves that reef has, I always set the earth genie. So that way, um, Reef can still cast his water magic. Because if he doesn't have, if he has like an Earth Genie um, on standby, or not on standby, uh, gosh, what's the term here? Oh, it's set. Yeah, if he if he has the Genies on set, then he hey, he learns new synergy attacks. And really, I don't want him earning learning any uh, Earth Genie. Earth moves yet. Let's go ahead and I'm just gonna go ahead and attack the troll here. Boom! Come on, die. There we go, it took care of that. And the harpy attacks and it takes 20 damage. Let's go ahead and take care of the harpy here. Critical strike! There we go, we took care of that. Now, I know one complaint that this game gets, and I know, and I know for a fact, a lot of diehard fans in the series. Uh, actually think that this is the weaker game out of the three games in the whole entire series and I and I can understand where they come from one of the biggest complaints that I've seen of people say about this game besides you know the points of no return is the fact that this game is a little bit easier than the other ones this game is really easy compared to the other two but I still like it I've always never complained about difficulty in games if a game's easy I still enjoy it whether or not it was a hard game or not, I've always enjoyed a game. Uh, anyways, as you guys can see in this room right here, we have another <laughs> Zolstone uh, puzzle right here. But we cannot solve this yet. We ha actually have to come back later for this one. 
But keep in mind that this room's here because we're going to be making a, a stop to this area uh, shortly. I would say about a few episodes from now. Alright. So now we're getting close to Passage. This is actually the last area in Passage. And you guys see that Fire Genie right there. Well, we won't be able to get that Fire Genie either. So, like I said, that room that I, I was just in, we're going to have to come back for that. And we're going to have to come back for the Fire Genie. So, anyways, let's go up to Passage. We've climbed up all the way to the mountain town of Passage. I can't wait to see it again. Now follow me to the very spot that Crane believed that was the only way across the peaks. We're almost to the passage that Creighton believes would lead us across the Kirin Mountains. It's above the town. Let me take you to take you there directly. We can come back and explore passage later. Okay. So let's go and meet up with uh, Reef and see what he's talking about with this passage here. So this is the way across the Kirin Mountains. What? But we're so high up in the clouds that there's nowhere else to go. Nonetheless, this is the spot that Creighton believed that the key to crossing over. That's impossible. We're at the very top of this mountain. How can we go anywhere from here except back down? The only- <laughs> if only we had the Sora Wing with us. It looks like Sora Wing got updated. This feather of the mountain rock is the, is what gives the invention the gliding power. If trained, the depths can use the soar wing to fly it with high precision. Okay. But there's a crux of this matter. See the mountain across the sky? That's Craggy Peak. Creighton, sa Creighton says that the ancient ancestors of the adepts, us adepts lived there. Okay, let's see what Craggy Peak is. This mountain was once home to the Neox. Uh, Their ancient but highly advanced civilization created many remarkable devices. Oh, okay. They are known as the Genii. Our ancestors lived there and many other places across Wayard. The Genii that lived in this peak were known as the Neox. And they looked over this part of the world. Okay, so let's see who Neox are. Neox, the Genii ruled over, uh, ruled all civilization with their powers. The ones who lived in the now called Craggy Peak were called the Neox. The Neox worked with the Exo Exoti to create the alchemy machines. But the alchemy vanished from the world, so did the Neox. Okay. Did Creighton think to, that the Neox used their powers to travel between here and there? Exactly, he thinks that we could create some sort of sky passage between the peaks. The Neox Genii worked with the ancient people Passage to create a machine that can manipulate the clouds. Creighton said that there, <laughs> that such machines were based on alchemy principles. The one in Passage is called the Alchemy Forge. Alright, let's see what the Alchemy Forge is. This ancient machine was built on the Neox and is powered by the element of fire. It is thought to create wondrous things. <laughs> well, show us the way to this machine, then. It's not so simple. Creighton couldn't figure out how to get past the Jalcomy Forge running. But Creighton is a genius. How can we succeed when he couldn't? We have to figure it out. There's no other way to reach Belinx if we can catch up with Creighton. Not to mention getting to Morgul to find that feather. If only we, ha we hadn't run into those fiends in the cave. Hey, Blados had a direct hand in forcing us into the south part of Hangara. But why is that masked man tag along with him? You know that guy who wanted to know if, if we had the glyph book? He was super eager to send us south to find you, Reef. Not Creighton. From what I could gather, it seemed that Creighton suspected his true ad identity. Well, I'd hope. <laughs> For his sake. I got the feeling that they knew each other pretty well. 
Do you think so? Perhaps that explains why Crane was so willing to part ways. Well, I can't imagine that they'd be friends, but old allies, perhaps? I trust Creighton, but I can't see trusting anything about that masked man or Blados. I don't see how this helps us get across the sky. Now, if we... If only we did have a Sorwing. If we had a Sorwing, we wouldn't be here, Tyrell. <laughs> Too bad ours is broken. Of course, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that. Yeah, exactly. So all we had to do is an ancient legend about a machine that could make a cloud passage. I wish I had, a, had pried more details from Creighton when we were last here. No use fretting about it now. I guess we'll just have to investigate this ourselves. That's the only way we'll get pe get to the peak. So I have, so we have nothing but a dusty Jedi legend to go on. <laughs> That's all. Just the Jedi and the fabled cloud passage to Craggy Peak. What? Have you had another thought, Reef? There's one more reason Crane gave up on getting to that peak. He said there wasn't enough wide, <laughs> wide enough variety of psi energy to start the Alchemy Forge. Variety? What kind of psi energy do you think you, you think you needed? I don't know. Well, actually, that kind of makes sense because, well, they, uh, Crane and Reef. I mean, Grief is only water adept, and I assume Noel was only water adept too. So, well, who else came here with you and Crane? Just my sister and no Noelle, and we're both water depths. He, yeah. But now they have four of each of the elements, so now they'll be able to solve the puzzle. Then maybe we have a chance because we cover all the types of elemental energy. You might be right. Then let's go find that alchemy forge, Reef. I'm sure we'll create a cloud passage to Craggy Peak in no time. I didn't notice it before. Things feel a di little different from when I was last here. This place is brimming with psi energy power now. Can you feel it? I'm certain it wasn't like this before. A change is in the wind. The key to, to all of this is in passage. Let's head back to town then. I'm sure we'll uncover the secret there. Okay, so now we have to go back into town in order to in order to figure out where this alchemy forge is and what we need to do. But before that, I kind of want to go and <laughs> do what I do in every town, and I kind of want to go and find all the hidden stuff. <laughs> but first, let's go down here real quick. Uh, you can't enter this building just yet. As you can read from the sign, it says, Meeting at session! Entry prohibited! Okay, mister, I'm not going in. <laughs> But, anyways, yeah, we can actually go and let's go and do that. Uh, do not enter this building because that activates a cutscene. So, uh, first order of business I really want to go is I want to go into the weapon shop here. If you notice that the weapon shop here is not functional. The reason why is here is the real reason there's a town all the way up here because metal liquefies more easily at this altitude. Take it from an old metal worker, discover for yourself. Uh... Actually, the reason why is because the Alchemy Forge isn't working right now, so the weapon shop is not available right now because they don't have enough energy sources to power up their forge. And not only that, they they need to put the <laughs> they need to solve a puzzle right here. If you guys couldn't tell, I'm actually gonna go solve this puzzle real quick. Uh, let's actually go and solve it. Yeah, let's push move here. If you guys couldn't tell that there's little panels right here, and there's like a line on the ground here that indicating a power source going into the machines there. Let's go fill, uh, fill, connect the connections, <laughs> if we, if you will. Let's go and put, uh, match the symbols on the ground where we're supposed to do it. Alright, so let's go push this down here. There we go. And then the final one's right here. 
push it all the way over here. If I can, there we go. <laughs> and playing this on the 3DS is kind of different than playing it on the DS because the circle pad. I'm so used to using the circle pad for everything. <laughs> but there we go, we fixed the connection. But the thing is, though, the Alchemy Forge is not working right now. Uh, we don't have the Alchemy Forge up and running yet, so they can't power the machines even though we fixed the connection. <laughs> so we're going to have to come back later. But right here, there's a smoke bomb right here. I mean, that's kind of useless uh, fodder I'm going to use to sell anyways, but hey, if, you're, if you want to know where it's at, there it is. And right here in this box is Bramble Seed. Bramble Seed's an item that you can use in battle. So, uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to go into in here, and if I remember correctly, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff right here. In this jar right here, there is a nut, and in this jar, there's some money, 10 coins. <laughs> I know it's not much, but hey, it's something. We come over here and look in this jar. Or this barrel? Yeah, this barrel. There's an herb. Healing item. Uh, let's go down here. And look in this jar. Inside's antidote. Okay. And then finally, I think... Oh, no, we're not finally. we still got a couple things left to find. In this barrel right here. Oh, I'm sorry. I looked at the bookshelf. <laughs> look in this barrel right here. There's Power Bread! I'm actually going to go ahead and use that. Power Bread is... increases HP permanently. So, the person who has the least health is Reef, so I'm going to go ahead and use it on Reef here. Now, let's go down... If I can remember where most of the stuff is. <laughs> oh, we have to actually leave the... building right here. We're going to have to come up here... to this room right here. Okay. So now, if we look in this jar, there's some money. <laughs> and now, if we come down here, actually, I think this leads down to the mountain pet. No, it doesn't. I was wrong. <laughs> I have to go and find that spot again. Actually, give me just a minute, guys, and I'll see you guys in just a second. Alright guys, I'm back, I'm sorry. I was trying to figure out where my last- because I know that there's a, a way to get back down to a certain part, but I couldn't remember for the life of me, and I was like, oh, it's down here in the inner sanctum. <laughs> you come down here to the sanctum, where the sanctum is, and if you come over here, you can open the door, and that'll lead you to this room where we have to solve another soul puzzle real quick. All you have to do is push the block down here. And push it over this way. And then finally push it up up to here. Now we created a bridge, and that'll lead us down here. Now down here is a part of the mountain passage that we couldn't go before. And inside is a treasure chest. Inside it is some quality Zol. I'm sorry about that, guys. I sneezed a little bit. <laughs> Anyways, quality Zol. It doesn't do us very much good right now, but it might be best to hold on to this because this is a forgeable material. We can't forge items just yet. We won't be able to until very late game. But hold on to any forgeable material you get. Even the, uh, right now, any Zol stones that you get, hold on to them. Because later in the game, we're going to be using them. So, that's a, that was the first of the uh, forgeable materials we're, we're going to get get right off the bat. Now, before I end this episode, I think I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, I'm going to not look at the box. I'm going to talk to this lady. I'm going to sell... Uh, see what items she has up for sale here. Uh, nothing, really. Nothing for sale. <laughs> I'm actually going to go ahead and sell some extra stuff that I don't need, like the sleep bomb and smoke bombs and all that other stuff. Because I don't really use that stuff. I don't really like using items in battle too much, unless I really have to. I've always been very conservative about that, so... <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to sell that Themis Axe, because we don't need it anymore. 
It's a rare find. I'll offer you 1450 1425 gold. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. I mean coins. I forget this. This game has currency of coins. Uh, as of right now, one thing I should mention. Any rare item you get and you don't need anymore, don't hesitate by selling them. The reason why is every rare item you sell goes into the artifacts section of any weapon shop or anything else. So you can always rebuy it if you decide, hey, I actually kind of want that back. So, it'll never truly go away. It'll always be in the artifact section. So, keep in mind that uh, for rare items like the Femus Axe I just sold. So, don't fear that you have to, you know, keep all rare items. You can sell them, and they'll always be there. That's one thing I've always liked about this series. <laughs> but, anyways, I think we've done enough in this episode. Uh, <laughs> we got past the mountain climb, and we got here to Passage. And we learned that we need to act activate the Alchemy Forge. Which is actually right behind us. <laughs> but anyways, I'm going to end this episode here. So next time we meet in Golden Sun, Dark Dawn, we're actually going to go to the Alchemy Forge. And hopefully find a way to power it up. So with that, I will see you guys in the next episode.